Hi, welcome to the Jacobitz Learning Group Citizenship Exam. We have two questions, it's a partial review. You can also see a version of this on USA Teens today. This is just a reminder, make sure you have all your uh, documents before you take the exam. Here's some of the things that they ask you for. Um, a residence card, citizenship and immigration services, driver's license, passport, state identification, some form, and you know to pay attention to parts of the exam. Let's go right to a question. How does the electoral college influence the number of senators elected? And so we're looking at what's actually going on. Each state has a different number of senators, therefore each congressperson is elected based on the number of total votes. Therefore, less populated states like Utah, which is located here, um, they, this state, states like Utah have less votes than Florida, Texas, and California. And you can look here, California is a little bit larger, so it has a lot of people that live there. Uh, everyone knows Florida, that's where we're located. They we're so populated, we have the third worst traffic report in the in the nation. And Texas is big state too. And so those states are heavily populated. And when you look at Utah, it's not just size, it's also weather. All of these states up here, you have weather conditions to think about. So if you can just think about like where people go, what's here in New York at one time is really, really populated, still is heavily populated. And just a lot of places where people tend to go um, to live. So let's, let's give you some choices here like you'll have on the exam with the same question, how does the Electoral College influence the number of senators? And I want you to listen to the language, the Electoral College determines how many people will be elected. This is a possibility. Um, the Electoral College is how the, the United States legislature ensures that each state had the correct number of votes. This is a better answer. And less populated states do not have any votes because they are too small to elect persons. This is exactly the opposite. Each state has to have an amount, but the amount is based on the number of people in the state. So this is the opposite of what was said. You definitely don't want to check choice C. Okay, then you have choice D. And D says, the Electoral College makes sure that heavily populated states do not have more votes than lesser populated states. That's not what they do. There's more people, so they tend to be able to be able to carry more votes. They try to, though, in, um, they try to, um, the United States government does try to at least make sure that there is some fairness, like New York can't have too many more votes than a place like Maine or New York. They try to, to make it somewhat fair and even, which is how it gets complex. But anyway, that's your example. Okay, Joe Biden, the 46th president of the United States. We're still fairly much a pretty young country. He is the chief military officer. A lot of people want to put that it is... Um, the person in charge, but he is actually chief of the military. So whatever we're doing now, like in Russia, giving, um, you know, aid and this and that, since he's the chief of it, he gets to decide what we do. And so I'm making these dots here. So a lot of people think it's whoever the secretary of war is or secretary general, but it is really President Joe Biden. Okay, the president in his roles, he is over the executive branch. You think of this in terms of executives, like who's in charge of your building. They are the managers in charge. Here's a picture of President Joe Biden. And over here on the right, we have Vice President Kamala Harris. So as long as you know these two, you should be all right. So this is Vice President Kamala Harris over here. Okay, three branches, guys. 
legislative meaning law. So if you can think of legis law, because that's what it means, you got this here, you can think of legislative, judo, judicial, I'm sorry, I said judo. A lot of people, you have, you know, you have this word um, in Spanish, if you can get some kind of link here, or if you can do like juris, this was Latin, they call it a juris um, doctorate degree, meaning you have like some power to be a lawyer, but you have your judicial, these are people who make laws. Anyway, that's what that means. So if you can get that and, you know, executive, it's just the top and think of these three. Current Speaker of the House is Kevin McCarthy. Former Speaker of the House is Nancy Pelosi. Don't need to hear. Just remember McCarthy. And here's a picture of Mr. McCarthy. He's a lawyer. Um, why is he important? He's very significant because he's the person who takes over if both the president and the vice president can no longer serve. And that's right over here. Check mark for you. Make sure you understand his role and the importance of this position in the United States of America. I'm going really fast. Okay, he just got appointed. Okay, so now your question number two goes right to this. What happens if President Biden nor Vice President Kamala, oops, I'm sorry, I put it. A here, Kamala Harris can no longer no longer want to serve the country, and you have your choices goes into a state of emergency. A, well we kind of are, but this is not the answer. Um, so the Speaker of the House is now X as President. Your answer is B, and your other choices. C, we get to go back to an election and elect somebody. The United States Congress figured that was too much work and too gruesome for us, so that doesn't happen. And D is just an absurd question, trying to confuse you and trying to say that the Secretary of War would come in and decide how we're going to run an election again or how we're going to do anything. So choice here is B. Okay, the cabinet. This is where it gets tricky. There's so many parts here, agriculture, commerce, just think, uh, agriculture is where we get our food, commerce, business, defense, education, almost everything we need, the Secretary of Health and Human Services, Homeland Security, um, branched out from immigration, so you kind of don't have a separate department there, housing and herbal, so almost everything we need, interior, Labor, this is how things work inside our government. I don't know why we don't have an exterior. I guess that gets taken care of when you're talking about, like, defense. This would kind of be, like, where we're going to battle and where we're going to war. So that, that would be covered under the Department of Defense. But you do have the Secretary of the Interior. Secretary of State, state of things, how things are going. Secretary of Transportation, Treasury, Veterans Affairs, Attorney General, Vice President. That's a cabinet. Here are the departments. Again, remember, you can download this. Currently, this is how this acts. The United States foreign citizens are allowed to run for a federal election. It's how former President Barack Obama was able to run. He was born in Hawaii later moved on to Indonesia, but he was born here. So you think about born, and I'm sorry because I know a lot of people who watch here are, you know, are, are from other states. Okay, here I just want to make this clear. This is a one question you don't miss because this question shows up on most of the exams, so please don't mess, miss it, so we're reiterating. Okay. Big number, 435, Congress. Look at all your states. These two that I circled here just now, Alaska and Hawaii, they were admitted states after most of the other states. And 
this isn't the GED, so they don't ask you a lot of questions on the history of each state. Um, you just need to know what the states are. Like try to get try to get an idea, try to get a map, and make sure you know California, Nevada, where they do um, Las Vegas. A lot of singing, dancing, gambling is next to California. Was a gold rush, so these people who were all located in here and here said, "Let's go west," and they were trying to go over here for the gold rush. California, these states, we Mexico had its own war with Spain, and then we had a war with Mexico and New Mexico. I won't get into the politics of that, but anyway, Mexico separate, New Mexico uh, is ours. And try to think of this if you're Texas, because remember you have the Tejano music, so you had, uh, and, and Selena, the the first one, um, not Cantilla, not Gomez, came out of here, but that's because back 100 years ago, these people that lived here owned this. So if you can remember, this is Texas, because they call it Tex-Mex, and you can remember New Mexico's here on borders, you can remember states, and then believe it or not, right here is Colorado, where a lot of people go skiing. It's kind of cold sometimes there. Oklahoma's the Dust Bowl, Arkansas, the South, Louisiana, if you can try to remember Louisiana, all these states. These were slave trading states because you could come right from the Caribbean and drop slaves over here, and it was called the transatlantic slave trade. So all these states were what were called port cities, P-O-R-T, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, quick trade. Quick trade coming off the Atlantic Ocean, which you see over here, quick dumping spots, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, uh, there's a whole thing about this. All of these were quick places to drop people off, and even though it's an, a nasty part of our history, it just is a reality and the truth. Okay. Let's go. 50 states times two senators is 100. Ooh, should be 52 times 2. I don't know. Somehow it's not. Okay, so there are two Washingtons, and the first Washington is located over here. Um, sorry about that. This is this Washington, <laughs> okay, that really comes up from this space over here, which is Canada. And that's not the Washington that is Washington, D.C. The Washington, D.C. is this small area not too far from Maryland and Delaware. You can barely see it, and you see how small it is, but it's hidden in here up near Virginia. And people met here just to decide who to vote. There's a lot of people like Thomas Jefferson and those lived in Virginia, so they just made their government here. That's the history behind it. So this over here is Washington, D.C. And my teacher's going to get on me about grammar rules. <laughs> I am the teacher. <laughs> so... This is the Washington, D.C. People sometimes just say D.C., District of Columbia. So make sure you have that straight and make sure you have the regions. And then kind of try to understand that this Washington, D.C. came out of Virginia. Or, well, was next to Virginia. It's like called a triangle because of how it shaped Virginia and Maryland, which is over here, you can barely see. So that's what's going on. Okay, moving on. This is signed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Next to Maryland, you have to look at this whole area over here, try to get, these are just the counties. Here's Virginia, here's DC, and here's Maryland. And look how large Maryland is. You have all these places over here. Um, Annapolis is over in this area here. That's where the Naval Academy is. That's where a lot of people 
um, well, not a lot. It's exclusive, but a lot of people. But, pe but people go to learn training, and so those are just the counties. And here's just some information. Just remember, July first was when it was actually signed, but we do the fourth. That's how we celebrate it. Okay, and White House is located in D.C. Federal office. The federal office goes to the state government. The state government have districts. Like I try, I'm going over it here with Wisconsin, the capital of Wisconsin is Madison, and then each county has a district. So you would go Madison, Wisconsin, and Madison, Wisconsin would be where all those other uh, district elected officials meet. So because you have a state house of representatives, and then from there each county would then turn around and have, they would have each district, I'm sorry, would have a county. And then you have county elections and you have district elections. Um, I don't know if you see this over here. This is the White House and the president and his family live here. And over here is, his, is also his office and they call that the Pentagon. Also called the Oval Office. So if you see that on a test, just make sure you know the Pentagon is kind of the official business place where he lives. White House, you can go and take tours. And that's pretty much how it is. Okay. Did Florida here? I'm impartial to it. This is where we're located. Okay, each of these is separate counties. If you guys are familiar, they're having... Um, they're having right now a hurricane in France, but we had a bad one and a couple um, months ago. And some of these counties up here were hit. Those were actually counties. And inside these counties, you have district. So I tried to highlight here, but each this place here is one district where we elect our senators and our people uh, that come up. And then Miami, Broward, and Palm Beach County, Martin County, you know, they're all considered Collier County, Monroe. If you guys ever come down here and go to these little tiny places, they're like called the Keys. This is kind of a district. Okay. Um, sorry about that. I put Palm Beach in here. Palm Beach has a different district. So let me go here, get all of this, but even though it's still considered like, this is all still considered Southern uh, Florida. Okay, here's your Department of Justice. This is, I'm sorry, she's deceased. But I wanted to leave Ruth Bader Ginsburg up there because she did a wonderful thing for the court, um, but she has since passed on. Um, there were five men in total. There was a, the first one, Sonnemeyer. There was Justice Amy Coney Barnett. There was also Sandra Day Connor. And she's since retired. Uh, but Sandra Day Connor was one of the few women, so I'm going to go ahead and put her here. Um, well, you have a Chief Justice, and I think you need to know that. And other than that, just take a look. These are the people that decide if your court loses, if you go to court against and it loses, uh, you can appeal to the state government, then to the, I'm sorry, you can appeal to the district, then to the state, then to um, civil court sometimes, and then on to federal. Gets a lot. This is him. Believe it or not, your chief justice can override the decisions of the entire nine-member body. The United States Constitution was signed, believe it or not, although they meet in Washington, D.C., was signed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. They call it the City of Brotherly Love, and this is Pennsylvania. This is a map of the whole place. Um, 
They were called the framers of the Constitution. Actually signed in 1789. So but we celebrate 1776 because that was our independence from Britain. Um, this is just some interesting. It's confirmed or put into words of the United States. If you ever get a chance, Google U.S. Constitution. You know, look it up and you'll see all these things. There's a show called Suits. They have a real good property about, a real good title about how this got in. And this is a preamble. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. And they even put in what that is, future generations do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. Here's your amendments. Freedom of speech, one. That's the very first one everybody looks at. Amendment two, the right to bear arms so people can secure you in your house if you're doing weird stuff. Uh, right of the militia to enter a person's property. That's how the police mention all this stuff. And just, I guess they have more authority if they think you're a criminal to walk in. And Fourth Amendment is what lawyers use sometimes. Did you come in without probable cause? Did you not have a warrant? to come in here. It's called an unreasonable, unreasonable search and seizure. It's a very important amendment because a lot of times when people's rights are violated, they check for police authority to do something. Protection for the right to life, liberty, and property. You might see a term called double jeopardy, which means you cannot be charged twice for the same crime. Okay. Amendment six, right to accuse persons in civil cases. Uh, that's number six. Be familiar kind of with these 